ask for you. We're going to be doing it live. So first, I need to introduce uh, my team, although you can't see them. Uh, I have uh, my producer, my wife, Lael. She's going to be reading any questions that you have. You can just type them into the comments and she'll uh, read them up to you and I'll answer them. And then I have my daughter, Michaela, who is our cameraman, and my daughter, Gabriella, who is overseeing everything. So, we're ready to go. I'm gonna be making three dishes for you this morning, and they are two pasta dishes. The first one is a uh, linguine with a pink shrimp sauce. Then I have penne with sausage and, uh, and uh, ricotta. The ricotta is really interesting here because it gives the dish a really nice creamy texture and taste without actually having to use cream. Uh, and then after all that, I think we need a refreshing salad. Uh, this is one of my uh, mother, Marcella Hazan's recipes. It is an orange cucumber and a red radish salad. So let's get going. The first thing that I'd like to do is to chop the onion for the sausage and ricotta sauce. That's the first one we're going to do because it's the one that's going to take the longest to cook. And so I feel like you can zoom in on what I'm doing here with my hands. I oh. cut off the top of the onion and then I'm just going to cut it in half lengthwise. And then we uh, remove the skin. Make sure that you don't leave any skin that's kind of Switch. Milk, wilted or anything like that. And then we're going to cut lengthwise around the onion. Uh, these cuts need to be close together, and they don't want to just be straight down and cross. We want to follow the shape of the onion. So we start where the knife is almost horizontal, making these thin cuts. And yeah, I guess I could do it almost blind, but it's easier with my glasses. And just go around the onion. It's as if you were making lots of uh, narrow wedges around the onion. Make sure that you don't really cut through the root so that your knife can't extend past the root as you're doing this. Of course, it also helps if your knife is sharp. Always. They say that the sharper your knife, the less you cry. But, you know, if you don't cut yourself, that's even better. Okay, once you've gone all the way around, it's kind of like the spokes of a wheel, I'm going to cut across the onion as if I'm doing crosswise slices. Use a slicing action with your knife, and you see you have very nice finely diced onion uh, without, you know, much pain and suffering. And the trick to that is that uh, we didn't make that many cuts. See, I don't need to finish chopping this. It's already chopped. So I'm going to put this in my pan, and uh, okay, you can uh, go back to the other uh, mode, the right mode. And we're going to saute it with some butter. Now, pretty much any dish that we do in Italian cooking tends to start with either butter or olive oil, which one we use really depends on the kind of flavor that we want. So since this is a, a sweet, you know, creamy dish, butter is better suited. So notice one thing, I didn't heat the butter or the pan first. I'm heating the onions and the butter together. And that's because when uh, you put onions into hot butter or hot oil, what you're really doing is frying them. We don't want crispy fried onions. We want onions that soften and release their flavor because this, after all, is a flavor base. So, uh, we're going to let this saute for a little bit. In the meantime, we're going to get our sausage ready. So, the sausage, uh, this is, you know, one thing that's hard to get in the States uh, that we have in Italy is, in my opinion at least, really good fresh sausage. And what I find is the closest is broccoli. And the reason for that is because it's the mildest one. You know, most usually fresh sausage in Italy does not have a lot of spices in it. It's salt and pepper, maybe white wine, uh, maybe something else, but that's about it. And usually we don't use fennel either, so the broth course tends to uh, imitate that flavor the best. So just cut away and peel away the casing like this. And then we're going to crumble it up 
so that we can saute it together with the onion. I'm just going to actually cut it up with my knife like this. There we go. We don't need to focus on this. It's fine. Oh. All right. So, uh, for those of you who saw my little teaser, I'm glad we did that so that we discovered what we, why the frame was sideways, but now we figured it out, thankfully. Okay. So while we're waiting for that, to do this thing, we're going to start the shrimp sauce. So, shrimp sauce begins by sauteing some uh, garlic in some olive oil. Now, when we use olive oil in the dish, it's because of the flavor that we want to give the dish, right? So, we always want to use a very good olive oil, one that's going to give good flavor. Always use extra virgin olive oil. Uh, that is the highest grade of olive oil, and you know, it's actually kind of a misconception uh, that high grade premium olive oil shouldn't be heated, that it uh, uh, deteriorates if you heat it, because actually the better the olive oil, the higher the smoke point. So don't worry about using a good olive oil when you're cooking, it's actually essential. So uh, we're going to do some, put some garlic in. We're going to be using garlic in its mildest form. And uh, the way that uh, we use garlic is either chopped, and that gives us the most flavor, or sliced, and it gives us a slightly milder flavor. Or the mildest way is what we're going to do now, which is just to uh, just lightly crush it and put it in whole. And then we're going to take it out. Uh, I don't know if you noticed how I was uh, whacking the garlic to get it peeled. I know a lot of people use the blade of the knife to do that, but uh, I don't like whacking the blade of the knife, so I always use the, uh, the handle instead. Once again, I need my glasses. Okay, here we go. So, let's put the garlic in, turn the heat on. I think I want to use another one, but a little bigger one than those. Those are just too small. And by the way, don't forget, if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer questions during the class live. So just uh, type them into the comment section, and well, we'll read them out to you. So you see, I don't want to whack it like this. I use the handle. Break it up. So that accomplishes two things. It makes it easier to peel, and also crushes it lightly, which releases its flavor. Okay. Okay, our onion. Not quite there yet, but getting close. Okay, let's clear this off here. So, it uh, looks like we have a question, Well, If you have a large garlic clove with a green center, should you remove that area, Since Jan, asked Jan Webster. Hi, Jan. So, actually, um, that is an interesting question, and one that comes up a lot. There's some controversy over that, so people uh, swear that you should always remove the green shoot. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that if, the green shoot is the youngest part of the garlic, but it also means that the garlic clove itself is the head is getting older because it's sh the shoot is coming out. So really, ideally, what you would do is get a different head of garlic, but if that's what you have, it doesn't really, in my opinion, make any sense to remove the green shoot. Uh, and my mother felt the same way as well, and she had uh, a long argument about it with uh, Jacques Pepin, who always thought that you should remove the green shoot, and in the end he said, you know, Marcella, I can't imitate his French accent. He said, uh, I always leave it in there. All right, so things are moving along here. I, the garlic, I'm going to turn low because I don't want it to burn. I want to show you the uh, onion here. Can you see that? 
Jessica? Hmm. Yes? Okay, so you see it's starting to get a sort of a golden, rich golden color. And then we add the sausage. And we want to cook that until the sausage uh, becomes brown. Break it up well with your spoon. So, for the uh, pink shrimp sauce, the pink comes from tomato paste, actually. We don't even need to use fresh tomatoes for this. See, I've tried to choose dishes that you can probably easily do with things that you have in your pantry. So we put about a tablespoon or so of the tomato paste in a container and then add some white wine. And the thing about white wine is that, you know, there is no such thing as cooking wine. Uh, wine that you cook with should be one that you would be happy drinking some of, and might as well, why not? Uh, dissolve the tomato paste in the white wine, like this, I use a little whisk. This wine, by the way, is a Verdicchio, it's from the Marche region of Italy, and uh, by the way, if I don't answer your question right away, it just means that I can't right away because they need to do something before I answer it, but I will get to it. So, the tomato paste dissolved in the white wine goes into the pan where we had sauteed the whole garlic cloves in the olive oil. Uh, by the way, if you just joined us, my name is Giuliano Hazan. I'm doing an Italian cooking class making two different pastas and a salad today. So you want to let the alcohol evaporate out of the white wine, because otherwise you get that kind of strong uh, wine flavor. This is the sausage. Stir that, maybe turn the heat down a little bit. There we go. And this is almost done. And then I need to get the shrimp ready to put in there. I peel those already. I just want to show you quickly how I peel shrimp. Now maybe you can zoom in. Uh, one of my pet peeves is when you get a shrimp at a restaurant that's got the shell on the tail still attached. I don't know what I'm supposed to do at that point. Am I supposed to just, you know, throw that part away even though there's good flesh in there? Or do I have to get down with my fingers and peel it? I don't like that. So I always peel the shrimp entirely. When you get to the end, near the shell, and near the tail, I mean, just uh, take the short end in the middle and bend it back like this, and then grab the tips of the tail and pull it, and then you should have your tail there. Well, that fell off. Sometimes it happens, but it's not a big deal here. That's why I have two, just in case the first one doesn't work. Let's see if the second one will work better. There we go. Bend it back, gently pull. There, I think we got the tail on that one. Then you need to debane them, which means that you use a paring knife, cutting the back like this, and then if there's a vein there, you pull it out like this. Do the same thing with the other one, like this. And then hole in the pan here, I'm going to turn this back up. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five. Six, that looks like six. So put the shrimp in and a little bit of salt. And okay. Now the sausage is pretty much uh, cooked now. Let me show you here. So now I'm going to add uh, some tomatoes. And here I'm using canned tomatoes. In this case, they're jarred. Uh, anything in the jar usually is uh, a better quality. Uh, when I want a nice deep flavor of tomato, uh, unless you have really spectacular uh, ripe fresh tomatoes, uh, a, a canned tomato is best. I always like to use the whole peeled tomatoes, ideally from San Marzano. Uh, but it, uh, San Marzano, those words are not really enough in the label because it has to also include the 
letter is DOP. That means that they're certified and they're real. So a little bit of salt for the tomatoes. And now we cook these tomatoes down for maybe 15, 20 minutes. So I have a, let me ask, answer a question. We have a number of questions. Well, the first you know, one is Ruth Shear, who yes. wants to know how high the heat is under the onions. Well, you know, it varies. If you're doing a lot of other stuff and you don't, you know, you don't want it to get done too soon, keep it on low. If you have everything else ready, you're just waiting for the onions and you can stir them constantly, then you can keep them on medium or medium high. And by the way, uh, if I don't get to all your questions live, I promise I will go and look at your comments and I will answer them all in the comment section afterwards. So you see I'm cooking these shrimp whole right now and the rest of the shrimp instead we're going to cut into bite-sized pieces. You know, there's something about, you know, things that are for a pasta sauce. Pasta sauce is meant to be a seasoning for pasta. So, you know, if you have a dish of pasta and then you have, you know, three or four jumbo shrimp sitting on top, well, the jumbo shrimp may be very good, but really they're not doing anything for the pasta. They're not seasoning the pasta. You really need to have bite-sized pieces so that you'll get a little bit of shrimp in each bite and you can distribute the flavor better. Okay. And I have one more question. Uh, Zelda Caldwell wants to know, are there any shortcuts for deveining the shrimp? Uh, yes, Zelda. <laughs> There are these uh, contraptions that you can buy that are supposed to devein the shrimp all in one fell swoop. Um, I haven't been very good at using those, so I just had to do it by hand anyway. But there, there are special tools that you can use for that. Uh, all right, once the whole shrimp, you know, are cooked, and it takes maybe a minute or two to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to, and we'll make what we're doing here, because what we need to do is uh, chop them up very finely. It's interesting, the shrimp sauce, part of it is a little bit of the consistency of the meat sauce in a sense. So I'm going to use a uh, food processor. shrimp, by the way. I always like to buy my, fridge, my shrimp frozen in the frozen bags. The reason being that unless you're buying them from a uh, shrimp fisherman who just caught them, pretty much any shrimp that you see sold in markets is or was frozen. So instead of buying something that they have thawed and put out in the case and you don't know how long it's been sitting there, much better to buy a bag of frozen shrimp. You keep it in your freezer, 
And then if you need some shrimp, you just take what you need and thaw them, and uh, they can be thawed very quickly. hot again and it's bubbly, I'm going to add uh, some cream. Uh, do we have a question? Susan Berger wants to know if she should remove the garlic prior to adding to the sauce. Uh, for the shrimp? Yes. So once the garlic is uh, brown, sort of a golden brown, then you remove it. You know, it's interesting. When we use whole garlic, it is the only time that we actually let garlic brown it chopped or sliced, uh, just get it to the point where it's sizzling well and releasing its flavor because when it browns and leave it in, it can be bitter. I just need to uh, wipe my board so that we can do the salad. As I mentioned at the beginning, the salad that we're doing is an orange cucumber and red radish salad. This is a recipe of uh, my mother, uh, Michelle Anzan. I'm sure most of you know who my mother was. And um, we start with the orange, and I want to cut it up so that uh, that is bubbling. I need to add the cream. I need to wait for a question for a sec. So add the cream. Uh, there, that should be enough. Let's give our sausage and tomatoes a stir too. Let's see how they're doing. Basically, you want to cook until uh, the sauce is no longer watery. You see that it's reduced down. Uh, you see the, the butter kind of rise to the surface. Okay, let's get to our orange. We want to tear away the rind completely, not leaving any of the white pith underneath. So first I do the ends like this. I need to make sure that I've gone down to where the orange is. And then you set it down flat like this and just tear away around like this. And then if you miss some of the white pith, you can always go back afterwards and trim it off. But if you leave any of the white pith, it will give the salad a bitter taste, so you want to avoid that. If you're ever good at carving and woodwork in school, which I used to love to do, uh, you're probably going to be very good at this. Okay, so then we slice the orange across, and it really is very helpful if you can get seedless oranges, because uh, the seeds, apart from being bothersome, if you cut through them, they'll give off a bitter oil, which will also give the salad a bitter taste. Okay, so we did those slices. I have the salad plate here, so I've done most of it already. I'm just going to show you a little bit now. I have to go back to the shrimp for a second, and then the question comes. So you want to reduce down the cream. Uh, any dish that we do uh, with cream uh, is never with liquidy cream, a pool of cream at the bottom. We always want to cook it down. So that's what we're doing here. So the cucumber that I use here, I like to use what they call the English cucumber or seedless cucumber. Usually comes wrapped in plastic. And it has a thin skin, so you don't need to peel it. Uh, seedless, well, it's not completely seedless, but at least the, the seeds are small and not too, too bothersome. So do some nice thin slices like this and add them to the orange. And then we're going to add our radishes. I would recommend that when you slice your radish, you keep the top attached because that way you have something to hold on to. This has been washed by the way, I actually 
actually, everything has been washed. Uh, so cut off the very end, you do want to get rid of, and then do some nice thin slices. The best way to do that is to hold your knife close to the blade like this, because you want to have good control of your knife, not back here, and hold the radish with your fingers uh, down here, <laughs> fingers curled like this, so that you don't cut off the tips of your fingers, and you can even use your knuckles as a guide. And then use your knife, you see, in a slicing action, like this. Don't just try and go straight down with your knife. Use it in a slicing action, and slice the radish nice and thin. And it's okay if you go straight down. Okay, and then we add the radish. All right, the cream has cooked down. The next thing we're going to do is add some uh, parsley. This is some uh, uh, Italian flat leaf parsley. Uh, it's much more fragrant than the curly one. And that's what you should use all the time. Put your parsley in. Stir it in. Turn it down a little bit. And now we put the little pieces of shrimp that we have cut. Oh, I need to cook my pasta, too. Don't forget to cook your pasta. All right, I have two pots of water going here. Use lots of water when you cook your pasta. That way it will move around easily and cook evenly. Once the water is boiling, you add a generous amount of salt. And then you put the pasta in. These are the bean green in. You know, lingua in Italian means a uh, tongue. And if you actually uh, take a close look at a linguina, which is the singular of linguina, you'll see that it's not like a fettuccine. It's not perfectly flat. It is convex, a little bit the shape of a tongue. I'm going to put a timer just so I don't forget. That you know, it's not a good idea really to uh, cook pasta blindly with a timer. Can you turn this down? I think I turned it up instead by mistake. Once the shrimp are cooked, this sauce is done. Okay, let's put penne in for our sausage. You can also make this with macaroni, it's sort of like a small. Um, Oh, you know what? I turned the heat up on the, the shrimp instead of the water. That's what happened. Okay. The water's boiling. Salt. And put the pin in. And if you are just joining us, again, I'm Giuliano Hazan. And I am finishing to make two pasta dishes and a salad. And the important thing, of course, is to stir your pasta, otherwise it will all stick together. Um, make sure it comes up to boil quickly. You see that one isn't really coming up to boil really fast. I'm going to put the lid back on, and when I see it come back up to boil, I'll take the lid off. And let's do a question, why not? We have a number of questions about brands. They want to know your pot brands, your salt shaker brands, and your uh, the San Marzano tomato brands. Yeah, I really should have negotiated uh, uh, deals with all these companies ahead of time if I had known. Uh, so, um, first of all, pots. I like using hard anodized aluminum when I can because it distributes the heat very evenly, it has very good performance without hot spots and without burning. Uh, so uh, a good brand is Calflon for that. And then uh, for, oh, what else was it? The San Marzano. Oh, tomatoes, yeah. I hesitate to do this because these are hard to find. Okay, I have to take them out there. Um, but the important thing, as I said, really, is that you see the words DOP on the label. And if you do, pretty much anything you'll get will be good. Uh, again, if it's something in a glass jar, it tends to be higher quality. Uh, but we also 
bring in some products from Italy ourselves. So since you ask, uh, let me tell you about those. The olive oil I've been using uh, is an olive oil from the Veneto, uh, from just east of Verona. And uh, it's a very, very well balanced oil with slight hints of almond in it. And I can use it for everything. And it's very, very good. Uh, we also bring in some uh, uh, vinegar, red wine vinegar, which is made from Valpolicello wine, and then aged in brandy oak barrels for about 36 months. Very rich, wonderful red wine vinegar. We bring in a Cavanaroli rice. Cavanaroli is sort of the prince of risotto rices, and this particular one is made the old fashioned way. And by the old fashioned way, I mean the same way that it was made in 1648 with a mortar and pestle system. Uh, it's really amazing, uh, has a much richer, nuttier flavor. Uh, there's only one place in Italy that makes it this way, and we're the only ones to bring it in. The, our line of products is called Giuliano's Classic, and if you do go to my website and you look at the top uh, for Giuliano's Foods, uh, then you'll find it and you can order them online. So, um, I want to show you that, can you, can you see this, Michaela? Mm -hmm. So, this is cooked down, you see? So, this is ready, now we can add our ricotta. Ricotta in Italian, by the way, means cooked again. Ricotta is actually not technically a cheese. It's a byproduct of cheese, uh, because when and you make cheese, you know, the curds form and settle at the bottom, and the liquid that comes up to the top is called whey. And uh, the whey is then cooked again, as it were, and this creamy part of the whey rises to the top, and you skim it, and that is what becomes your pasta. Nowadays, they also do add some milk to just give it a little bit more richness, uh, but in essence, that is what we call the so you stir in the ricotta, and I also want to put in a little bit of basil. I have some fresh basil here, and I always like to cut my basil at the very end, just before I put it in, because otherwise it will uh, wilt and turn dark and lose its freshness. Not a, a fine chop, just a coarse chop. Goes in here. And let's stir our legume. Okay, they're doing fine. Let's stir the pigme. There they are. They're doing fine. Good. Uh, do we have another question? Uh, the salt shaker. The salt shaker. Oh, uh, the salt shaker, the manufacturer is Oxo, the, the people who make the goop. Oh, I don't quite know. Uh, they make the Good Grips products. Uh, they don't make this exact model anymore, but they do make something similar that you might find. By the way, the salt that's inside is a great salt that we don't bring in, but it's a salt from uh, Italy uh, that uh, really brings out the flavor in the food without adding any harshness or bitterness. Do not be afraid to use salt. Salt is essential in cooking. It really does bring out the flavor. Yes? Carlo Bianco, Carlo Bianco has a question if, for the lactose intolerant, is there something they could use instead of um, milk or cream for the shrimp sauce? Well, I think there may be lactate products that, that make cream. I'm not positive. I know they make milk, so it, it's, it's possible. So, see this has come out nice and creamy, and uh, there's a big chunk of sausage, just you know, break it up like that. But this is done, and you're just going to turn the heat off. I turned off the heat under the shrimp too, because that's done. So all we really need to do is to finish the salad. Uh, one last thing that goes in is some fresh mint. Uh, just take off the leaves and give it sort of a medium chop and add it. Do this just when you're ready
to serve. You can make it up to this point several hours ahead of time, um, but then wait until you're ready to serve to add the mint and to season it as well. Because uh, the dressing for this salad is very much like the way that we dress most Italian salads, green salads. And uh, to do so, uh, Italians don't usually pre-mix the dressing. By the way, there's no such thing as Italian dressing, at least not in Italy. Um, and uh, we season the salad directly. Rather than a recipe, we actually have a proverb that teaches us how to dress a good Italian salad. And the proverb says that you need four more people to dress a good Italian salad. Now, the, just sprinkle the mint on top like this. So the first person is a wise person. The wise person adds salt. And, you know, you have to be wise. Of course, it helps us everyone in this project is wise, but the salt person has to be especially wise because you have to gauge, you know, here we have the oranges that are sweet, so you want to maybe season the salt just a little bit more aggressively because of that. And then the second person is a generous person, a wise person, because they're using my olive oil. And you uh, generously put some good extra virgin olive oil. The third person is a uh, stingy person. Uh, the stingy person puts a red wine vinegar. For this salad, however, uh, we're not going to use any vinegar. We have uh, the acidity from the citrus, and it is enough, and I don't want to mix it with the acidity of the vinegar. So the stingy person will have a different job, and that job is some black pepper. We'll put some black pepper in. And then finally, uh, we have a, uh, a patient person who tosses the salad. Uh, here, the person has to be gentle as well, so that you don't break up all the orange slices. Uh, but especially in a green leafy salad, it's important to uh, really toss the salad thoroughly. And that way it gets coated well, completely, and it will taste better that way. Now my father uh, would always say that uh, you should toss a salad at least 34 times for it to be dressed well. And I still count when I dress my salad. Okay, so this is ready now to be served. And let's see what my timer says, my timer says that I have 40 seconds for a question. Do you have another question? People didn't hear this, um, the salt shaker and they want to know the names of the recipes. We have some people who are late joining. Sure, sure. So for those of you who joined us recently, again, I'm Giuliano Fazad, and names for recipes in Italian cooking are usually just a description of what it is. So we have linguine with a pink shrimp sauce sauces pink. Uh, and then we have penne with a sausage and ricotta sauce. Uh, and then finally, uh, an orange cucumber and red radish salad. Timer. <laughs> and all these recipes will be available. There should be a link in the, somewhere in there. Pinned. It's pinned. Pinned, okay. Uh, and uh, you'll, it'll take you to a page on my website where you'll have all the recipes available. So that factor was because the pasta is ready. So I'm going to drain it. I'm going to start with the pan. There we go. I do have a colander in this thing. Intensely flavored than that. 
and so you don't need a huge amount. And in fact, if you put too much, it would be like putting too much seasoning on something, and uh, it wouldn't be good. Okay, so that's that. Let me get the linguine out, and then we'll plate all of these, and then see if anybody's hungry here. Okay. Again, shake, 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 so that you get all the excess water out. You know, if you come to the trouble of making a, uh, a sauce that's, uh, excuse, me. <laughs> excuse me, a sauce that's well flavored, you don't want to dilute it uh, before you put your sauce in. So let's see where it's So we want to toss the pasta with the sauce right away, of course, because otherwise it will stick together. And you know, the harder the pasta is, when you put it with the sauce, the better it takes on the flavors. The pasta itself should kind of change the color, take on the color of the sauce. So let me plate this out. always tend to sell at the bottom, so grab some from the bottom. And so, uh, Michaela, Gabriella, anybody here hungry, you can come and have some. It, can you see? There, there or no? I'm going to put it I'll put it here. Also, it's kind of hard to eat all the way across the counter. Here's Fork for there. Here's a fork for here, and I can actually get to see them. I guess we're not going to get to see Lael. She's very gleefully saying no. <laughs> so, uh, I, go ahead. Yeah, that's the sausage in the cup. So I hope that you enjoyed this Facebook Live class. Uh, this is uh, a first for me to do something like this. I'm glad that it didn't completely. Uh, uh, have a tech failure other than our initial uh, sideways tease, but uh, really appreciate your joining us and watching. And uh, please leave comments and uh, questions if you have more questions that you'd like me to answer. Uh, again, my website is julianohazaran.com, and on there you'll find all our products. You'll find uh, cooking classes both here in Sarasota and in Italy because we do hope that one day we will be able to start that up again. This one doesn't even taste like cheese. You said Gabriella doesn't like cheese and I told her you're going to like this anyway. <laughs> uh, buon appetito. <laughs>